So my name is Josh Hadro. I'm the managing director of the IIIF Consortium. Um, so uh, this is the IIIF Community and Technology Highlight Session. Um, so I, I, with my two colleagues here, Glenn Robson and Meg O'Hearn, are going to go through um, some of the updates uh, specifically about the IIIF community groups and the technical specification groups. Um, and we're going to break it up a little bit. We have an hour here today. Uh, the three of us are each going to take a section of these updates and go through them. Um, and there should be a, a bit of time at the end um, for questions if folks have them. But by all means, um, feel free to put in questions uh, as we are talking into the uh, Whova chat and platform. Um, so really what this session is about, just to give you a sense of, of what it is, is um, is to, to give you a bit of insight into uh, the workings of the IIIF community. There are a, there's a whole array of community groups, um, as well as what we call technical specification groups um, that do kind of dedicated and specific work of moving ahead um, different elements of, uh, uh, you know, of, of things that need working on in the IIIF community. And so for the technical specification groups, that means quite literally working on something related to the specifications, working on solving technical problems or amending the current um, specifications to address new user stories, um, new issues that come up with web standards, things like that. Um, and then the uh, counterpart groups, the community groups um, are, are less, uh, are not charged with changing or addressing the technical specifications, but really are, are geared toward um, other, other aspects. So um, sometimes it's related to a particular domain um, or a particular you know, um, set of, of ways of working with IIIF. Um, and so, so that's kind of the, the, the bulk of what we're gonna go through here today. Um, just in case this is um, somewhat new to you and, and we're really excited that we have so many newcomers at this conference, um, we're, we're gonna kind of talk about a lot of these community groups, but you can see the whole list of them there. All the ones that we're talking about um, are listed on uh, this page. So IIIF.io slash community slash groups. Um, and there you can find a lot more details about each of the groups. Um, particularly useful if, if, you're, uh, if you hear us talk about one of these and you think that's really interesting and something you'd like to be a part of. The meetings, the whole point of the IIIF community is that it's very open and transparent. Um, it's why we're doing this. All the meeting notes are available to everyone. So if you hear something about a group and you want to join in, um, that's that's the whole idea. We, we re really encourage you to do that and welcome you to do that. Um, and so the meeting times are available on those group pages, uh, as well as the charters and other information about how those groups came together. And one other piece I'll mention um, before we dive right into um, some of the, the first set of updates is that we also um, have recorded a, a newcomer welcome to the IIIF community, which talks at a little bit of a higher level just about um, the processes that we use, you know, the open meetings, the, the ways that we meet twice a year at formal conferences and then other um, regional aspects, the way that the IIIF consortium supports the work um, of these various groups and, and, uh, and, and the staff who are here to present some of this stuff. Um, so that's a recorded presentation. Uh, it's available at any time. So it's on the Whova schedule as basically the second session um, of the entire conference. Um, so if you go back to it, you can watch it at any time. Uh, and it'll also be available on YouTube if, um, if you're looking for it later. Um, so that's a great way to, to get a sense of kind of the large scale way that um, a lot of these things work. So um, moving ahead, we'll, we'll dive into some of these um, community group updates. I will handle, I think the first four of these groups um, then hand it over to Meg. Um, but I will also say, um, just to, just to really be clear that uh, we asked, this is the community groups are the work um, of, of dozens of volunteers in the community, um, not just who attend these meetings, but who do really important work of, of organizing um, all the meetings, setting the agendas, putting out announcements, um, you know, putting together sessions at conferences like this. So um, we're, we're going through these slides, but it is really just meant to reflect the work of all the community co-chairs um, without whom we, you know, we couldn't do nearly, nearly the volume of, uh, of work and progress that we do. Um, so I will try to, to, you know, to talk about the co-chairs and, and the work they do, but I just want to be clear that this is not all stuff we're doing. Um, we're, we're helping reflect the work of, of these different groups. 
So, um, and I'll also say we're going through these alphabetically. Um, there, there is no good way to uh, to rank these. They all they all are making great progress in their own right. So, um, so we'll start with the 3D group, uh, which is the only one I believe with a numeral. Um, oh no, that's not true. D4H has one, but starts with a numeral. Um, so the 3D community group um, is uh, a really robust um, set of interested folks <clears throat> with the kind of root interest of figuring out how 3D might work in a AAAF um, context, right? So that, that seems um, fairly simple, but it turns out it's an extremely complex problem um, for a variety of reasons. And I encourage you, if you're interested to, to join their meetings because they're really making great progress. Um, so they meet monthly uh, as a community group, their, their main goal and, and um, uh, remit is, is to kind of share best practices, share existing work and kind of gather together uh, interest and momentum toward um, making some progress together as a community. So they've done tons of demos. You can see examples um, here, whoops, um, examples here on the screen. Move my Zoom interface. Um, they've done a really amazing job of bringing in speakers from other parts of the community, from so speakers from Mozilla, from Google, um, really coordinating efforts from major initiatives like the Smithsonian, from MorphoSource, from Sketchfab, um, and a lot of that uh, is in the aims of, as I said, uh, trying to figure out how. Um, 3D might work in a AAAF context. And, and the, the most specific goal there is to form a technical specification group. Um, so that's a whole set of different requirements. Um, and there's a lot of hard work that has to go into that about just aligning on the scope and, um, and what it would mean for, for 3D to work in a AAAF context. It doesn't mean solving all those problems beforehand, but it does mean agreeing on which problems are gonna be the focus of, or would be the focus uh, of work like that. Um, and so beyond that, yeah, just, just really, um, I wanna give a lot of credit to Ronald Haynes, Julie Winchester and Ed Silverton for doing some great work of marshalling interest in the community and, and really trying to move toward um, that particular goal. And so um, a lot of the challenges they face are, um, are very much related to that idea of, of not just um, showcasing current you know, the, the constellation of things happening in the world of 3D, um, but also uh, then trying to figure out how what we can accomplish um, in in the 3D canvas um, environment, um, and then you know a lot of things following from that is um, you know making sure that we document it, consider options for sustainability and and coordination and interoperability within that entire community, um, doing a lot of interesting work around workflows um, and and also figuring out how to make this you know useful. Uh, and viable for institutions that aren't kind of the largest scale national libraries um, or you know major research institutions. So um, as with all these groups, I really urge you to join one of those monthly calls. Um, they're they're at a great phase um, for you to uh, join in that work and and help make some progress. <clears throat> okay. Um, and next we turn to the archives community group. Um, which is at a, um, <clears throat> a bit of a crossroads, which we'll come to in a moment. Um, but this is uh, another one of those domain specific um, community groups. Uh, and you know, we saw this come out of a couple of conferences a few years ago, just um, looking at kind of some of the unique ways uh, and some of the unique elements of vocabulary and structure um, that come out of the archival community, particularly. Um, so the goals of the archive group uh, are, are geared toward toward that end to promote you know uh what kind of usage and what kind of best practices exist um for specifically archival materials and that kind of set of hierarchies that are um specific to archival collections um providing a venue for demonstrations of folks who have already done some of the work of, of trying to map those different things um taking a look at use cases that you know haven't yet been covered by some of the AAAF. Um, uh, elements and and some of this is I think related to um, uh, you know potentially working towards some cookbook recipes or or other documentations of best practices um, for how people are making use of these materials already um, and as with all these community groups just doing that work of disseminating gathering together um, uh, interested parties and uh, and making uh, a good solid locus of discussion for these different things 
So um, they've had a couple of really popular uh, conversations recently. Um, the, uh, in particular, I will say one of the, the, the big topics that I think has sparked interest and maybe is a good um, locus of interest for the, you know, the near term or, or medium term um, is this idea of, of how you might connect born digital resources in the AAAF context. And there are actually some really interesting um, conceptual elements uh, also related to 3D um, in a AAAF context, uh, some of the similar issues that have to be worked through. So um, examples there include eBooks, EPUBs, web archives, um, uh, work files, things like that. So they've seen really good interest on the calls. Um, for example, 60, 60 plus folks uh, on the October 27th call. Um, they are talking about moving to quarterly calls, but um, that sort of relates to this big piece of info. Um, is they're basically looking to figure, to, to reconfigure uh, how the archives group works. So, um, you know, through, through sort of natural processes, uh, you know, as happens with almost all groups, um, some of the co-chairs have had to step away. Um, so they're, they're basically put out this call to, uh, to get feedback on how the archives group might work. So uh, we encourage you to look at that URL bit.ly slash archives hyphen CG hyphen futures. Uh, and maybe actually somebody could paste that um, into the chat if they're able to, um, yeah, to copy that. that down. Thanks, Meg. Um, so that's a document that explains in much greater detail kind of what they're looking at and and um, how they might how they want to kind of talk about moving forward. Um, but I think this is, you know, this is kind of a healthy sign of um, of a lot of these community groups is, uh, uh, you know, is figuring out how to evolve and not just kind of keep doing everything kind of for the sake of momentum. Um, so the community, as I said, uh, the archives community group is looking for input, um, potentially even co-chairing if, if what I've been talking about here is of interest. Um, do get in touch, take a look at that document um, and get in touch. Um, the co-chairs are Adrian Stevenson, Mark Medienzo, uh, Rebecca Hirsch and Josh Schneider. And their info is um, is available on uh, on that uh, community group page um, from a little bit earlier. Um, okay. Uh, the AV community group. So this is an interesting example. I believe the first example um, of a community group that, uh, or uh, the evolution from a technical specification group to a community group. So. Um, the AV there stands for audiovisual, um, and uh, and really it comes from the a TSG, a technical specification group that was put together a number of years ago to help us get to the 3.0 version of the presentation API. And with that version of the presentation API came the ability to work with audio and visual materials in the specifications. And so that was just a heroic amount of work. Um, the editors, the, the TSG, the technical review committee all came together and um, did, you know, did some amazing things, got the process done, and we released that last June of 2020. Um, and with that, the, the work of the TSG was done. They had accomplished everything that um, was listed in their charter. But there's still a lot of useful work to be done in terms of uh, promoting it to the community, reaching out to folks um, who may find that of interest, uh, talking to developers who um, have systems that may be compatible or, or should be compatible with AAAF AV materials. Um, so that prompted the evolution um, from TSG to a community group. So that's the background here. Um, and the goals of the community group are, are similar to what I just said, uh, providing you know, a, a venue for um, dissemination and discussion of best practices around um, AV content in a AAAF universe, um, particularly developing um, cookbook recipes for uh, common use cases. Um, and also related to that, um, very specific kind of assistance and, and technical input um, into how that sort of thing might work. Um, developing recommendations um, for if, if there are sort of needed evolutions or use cases that come up that haven't been covered yet. Um, and, and a really useful element to this too is, is promoting, um, promoting the possibilities of AV um, to kind of other communities. So um, we're under no illusion that, you know, everybody already knows about AAAF and um, 
already, you know, has has this in mind. So a lot of that work is the work that a lot of us do um, is trying to spread the word and, and point out how the AAAF specifications can can really help um, shape things and and make things um, doable and not just doable, but doable in the context of open um, web standards and and browser standards that uh, that are usable by anyone with a modern web browser. Um, so, uh, so the current work, as I said, that's the transition I was talking about. Um, they've been really focusing on the recipe work um, and uh, the co-chairs there are uh, John Dunn, um, Tanya Clement uh, and Andrea Sagac um, who have done, yeah, great work spreading the word. Um, and that's sort of the plan for the next word is focusing um, on continued outreach. Uh, if we ever get, not if, I shouldn't say that, uh, when we inevitably get to a world where we start returning to conferences and um, doing some of the work of, of in-person presentations. Uh, I think they have a lot of interesting plans about some AV specific um, domains where, where they can help um, promote that. Um, and, and yeah, and just talking, I think they, they're doing sort of a nice series in their community group meetings uh, of inviting um, software developers and tool creators um, to their meetings to talk about um, integration with, with the major tools. So we've seen really great presentations from uh, Aviary, um, from AVP, um, from the Avalon system folks, um, from Audi Annotate, um, from a bunch of different places and, and uh, institutions that are um, at the stage of integrating AV capabilities into their work. Okay. And uh, the Discovery for Humans group. Um, so this is another relatively new um, community group. Um, and the, the the name maybe sounds a little funny if, if uh, it's the first time you're encountering it. Um, it's the, the, the reason it's called Discovery for Humans is that it is the counterpart group to a discovery technical specification group that Glenn will talk about a little bit later. Um, and, and because the discovery TSG is really focused on um, system to system or you know computer to computer uh, interactions and APIs that are you know um, passing data from one to another, um, this is really meant to, to point out that you know much of the animating need for those uh, discovery specifications is rooted in 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 human interaction, right? User interaction, user experience, um, and so that was the the impetus for creating the Discovery for Humans group. Um, their goals are, you know, at a very high level to understand how people find AAAF items, um, how also there's a nuance there, how people work with AAAF items in the context of, you know, given the fact that people don't necessarily only want to work with AAAF items or they can't only work with AAAF items. So I think that's a big piece um, of the work that they're doing. Um, researching and talking about and hopefully disseminating best practices about usability of, of AAAF um, discovery interfaces. Um, all of this related to, to that kind of research level and, and understanding the motivations um, and, and experience of, of people working uh, with AAAF at, at a variety of different levels. Um, and then the last point there really to catalyze the development of, of interfaces and, and iterations um, of discovery solutions across the AAAF community. So they are currently doing um, you know, a lot of work that is related to user experience interviews as well as features and feature reviews. So one example is the way that the AAAF logo um, is presented in a lot of different sites. There are very kind of subtly different interactions that happen when you click on the AAAF logo on a, say a university discovery tool. Um, and so they're kind of reviewing that and documenting it in order to present some, uh, some best practices. Um, uh, one thing that's not listed here, but I will also mention is that uh, in that feature review and, and uh, user experience review, um, a lot of the research went into um, some, some really compelling uh, presentation of uh, personas that actually were featured at the keynote on Tuesday um, from Amy Deshane, uh, who was speaking on behalf of many of the um, uh, of her collaborators in the D4H group, um, also working on the guides.iif.io site, um, which presents um, uh, 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 documentation for how to discover AAAF materials uh, at dozens of different institutions. 
Um, and I think the last one that I will cover here is the manuscripts community group. Um, so a little bit like the uh, archive community group um, that we talked about earlier, um, at a little bit of a crossroads. So the manuscripts group, um, oops, here we go. Um, um, so the manuscripts group, I think, is one of the oldest groups in the AAAF community. Um, and, and closely connected to that is the manuscripts domain is, I think, um, one of the areas where the, the, the core utility of AAAF was the first, you know, the first place where it was like really obvious. Um, and a lot of the interesting initial functionality came out of solving manuscripts related uh, use cases. Um, so their, their goals and guiding themes um, have been to uh, kind of present the latest and greatest work that's happening in the manuscript community. Um, to provide feedback on, on how those developments are happening and also to, to make sure that use cases there um, are captured in all the different API specifications. Um, and then, you know, to organize and gather um, um, uh, sessions and, you know, and make sure that uh, any showcase of, of uh, new, new implementations and new work um, is done at, at conferences like this or um, in other contexts. Um, as with the, the archives community group, um, the chairs, I think, um, are finding themselves having new duties um, and have been doing this for a while. So uh, this group is also kind of looking at how it might evolve or, or change how it's working. Um, one prospect is potentially moving it to an emeritus status um, where, you know, there would still be a lot of expertise in the community, but they would um, stop holding um, regular uh, meetings, either quarterly or, or bi-monthly. Um, but there's also some other possibility if, you know, if you're a really enthused um, manuscripts community person and, and you'd love to, you know, to help host meetings every so often, um, I think there's a way that we could, uh, you know, we could talk to you about taking that on and working with us to, um, to, to evolve the manuscript community in that way. So, um, if that's of interest, do get in touch with us. Uh, otherwise, um, we'll be talking in kind of the coming weeks and months about um, uh, about future plans for uh, yeah that that the the rhythm of manuscript community meetings. Um, but I think that is it for my piece. I think I'm going to stop sharing unless Meg, you want me to um, keep advancing slides. Can't hear you yet. How does Zoom work? <laughs> um, I can share. Okay, great. Let me turn this off then. There we go. Okay, can you see my slides? Yes. Put them on screen. Um, so I should briefly introduce myself um, for anyone who I haven't uh, had the opportunity to meet yet on a meeting. I'm Meg O'Hearn. I'm the Community and Events Coordinator for the AAAF Consortium. Um, so moving on with the community updates, um, the MAPS group has been doing a lot of interesting work. Um, MAPS is a really interesting group. They are both a community group and a TSG, and they alternate uh, meetings um, for, for each uh, uh, form of the group. Um, so they've been doing a lot of work to um, gather uh, a lot of use cases for maps in IIIF um, and have been doing a lot of work on the cookbook. Um, there was a lightning talk and um, a longer session yesterday um, that if you weren't able to attend those and learn about the cookbook work that's being done, um, those recordings will be shared. Um, so they're looking at creating different recipes for um, uh, working with maps in the AAAF con context. Um, and they're also inviting folks for a number of demos for related projects um, so that folks can learn from their work and create a community um, and um, really benefit from kind of like the group's mind. Um, so over the next year, they're gonna be working with uh, the TSG or technical specification group. Um, they are working on creating an extension to the AAAF presentation API that allows for um, the expression of more complex geospatial assertions. Um, and they're gonna just continue with the community demos. Um, so if you check out the IIIF community calendar, um, you can see when those sessions are and um, join them if you're interested. 
Uh, next up is the museums group. Um, so the museums group includes uh, staff uh, from museums around the world and from other GLAM institutions. Um, they meet monthly on the first Tuesday of the month. Um, and they do a lot of work uh, similar to what MAPS is doing with demoing new IIIF launches or tools, um, APIs, and different IIIF related website features. Um, they also talk about collaborations between institutions. Um, we've seen some lightning talks about that sort of thing um, during the conference this, this week um, and some of the challenges that they face. And they also just support institutions or other GLAM institutions that are um, new to IIIF and want to learn um, from peers. Um, so you can see more information about them at the link there. Um, maybe someone could post that in the chat if they have a moment. Um, and I also wanted to just direct you to their Slack channel. Um, if you're a member of the IIIF Slack, they have a great group going on there. And they've been also working on um, really promoting the work of their fellow institutions. So um, here's just a list of some recent uh, museum or GLAM related launches. Um, so, and this is stuff that I think we've also covered in the IIIF newsletter and that you might've seen in some other sessions during the, the event this week. Um, so the Art Institute of Chicago is now offering manifests for artworks via their API. Um, and they recently implemented Mirador 3. Um, and there's a link to view an example of one of their manifests um, there. Uh, University of St. Andrews um, is using the exhibit.so uh, site um, and tool to submit student coursework using the museum collections at the institution. Um, I hope that uh, many of you were able to attend the exhibit session that took place on Tuesday morning. Um, if not, it's really worth a look. It's a really robust tool for um, creating uh, storytelling uh, exhibitions with IIIF materials um, that is uh, actually very similar to some um, kind of complex work that the New York Times has done with storytelling and images. Um, it's really worth checking out. Um, so historic maps of Rome were just launched in a collaboration um, between CASVA and the National Gallery of Art um, using Mirador. Um, the British Museum recently re revamped their online collections um, and made a number of new works available via IIIF, and there's a link to check that out. Um, and also there's been a lot of really great work for the Getty, from the Getty recently, um, including creating a, a IIIF generator for including their images in Animal Crossing, um, and also some information about how other institutions can do that with their materials. And of course, the 12 Sunsets Project, uh, which is uh, a really wonderful way of viewing a photo, archi photo archive from Ed Ruscha of uh, Los Angeles, which actually recently won a Webby Award. Uh, the Newspapers Community Group. Um, They've been doing uh, some recent work to showcase uh, IIIF newspaper Im implementations um, and producing newspaper recipes for the cookbook. Um, they now need to update the newspaper recipe to make it compatible with the recent AV recipes. Um, and over the next year, they'll be working on um, having more demos and holding more meetings and ensuring that newspapers are represented in the search TSG. Um, the outreach group. Um, has been up to a lot this year. Uh, their highlights for the 2020-21 year have been um, helping to shape the IIIF ambassadors program. Um, we have about five ambassadors currently working in different areas to promote IIIF uh, within their own communities. Um, they also did a lot of work compiling and reviewing the IIIF implementation survey. Um, and this last survey that they worked on um, in collaboration with the IIIF staff uh, had, I think, uh, actually a record number of responses. And we got a lot of really great information um, on the status of IIIF implementations in the wild currently. Uh, and they're also working on setting up the IIIF um, uh, implementation checklist, a uh, set of best practices that um, will lead to interoperability in um, IIIF uh, implementations. Um, and they've also been collaborating with us on um, the virtual conferences and leading sessions, which is um, we're very, very grateful for. Um, so their calls are on uh, the last Tuesday of the month. Um, they're another group that's looking for new chairs uh, to help shape the future of the group. 
Um, they're really looking to move towards a model where they're working on spreading the word about AAAF in underrepresented communities um, to kind of diversify the base of the folks attending the calls and um, implementing uh, AAAF and getting involved with um, the conferences. Uh, so now I'm going to hand things over to Glenn, I believe, to talk about the technical specification groups. Okay, thank you. So hopefully you can see the slides. Yep. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the technical specification groups or TSGs. Uh, these are groups that are looking at extending the specifications. All of these groups are open and we welcome technical expertise, but I think almost more importantly is hearing how people want to use these features so that we can make sure that the future specifications uh, reflect what people want to do. And I don't know if it's pandemic related, but this year has been an incredibly productive year for TSGs, as you'll see in the update. Um, so the first one uh, is the Authentication Technical Specification Group chaired by Tom Crane and Stefano. Uh, and this is looking at um, updating the uh, authentication um, technology that we came up with for earlier versions of AAAF to make it compatible with version three, and also to extend it to support non-image resources authentication. And there are also some uh, developments in the browser technology, which means that we have to uh, adjust the authentication specification to make it continue working. There was a great presentation on Tuesday by Tom and Stefano, um, if you want to hear more details about what they're looking at. Uh, this group meets uh, every Tuesday, every second Tuesday, uh, and alternates with the search group, which I'm going to talk about next. So this one is chaired by Maria, uh, Mike, and Tom Crane, and helpfully Maria has provided a video. Um, here we go. Hello, I'm Maria Whitaker with Indiana University and I am one of the co-chairs of the Content Search Technical Specification Group. The other co-chairs are Mike Bennett from the University of Edinburgh and Tom Crane from Digirati. I'm here to give you an update on the work of our TSG, which is the most recently formed TSG. Our goals are first, to bring the content search API in line with Prezi 3. And to that end, we need to align the syntax of the content search API with the syntax of presentation API version 3. That work will be released as content search 2.0, and it is currently under review. We expect to have it ready very, very soon. We also need to add support for time-based annotation searching, given that Prezi 3 added support for time-based media. We also want to address issues that have come up since the publication of 1.0. Another goal is to evaluate user stories and issues for the inclusion of new features and integrations into the next version of the API. We also need to coordinate our work with that of the authentication TSG to ensure compatibility of authenticated searches. We are currently engaging with the community to collect and select use cases to be included in the next version of the Content Search API. We meet on Tuesdays at 12 noon Eastern time every other week. And we also have a search dedicated Slack channel. Please join us both by coming to our meetings and on Slack. To ensure that we address the needs of the community with respect to search, we need to hear from you and we need to know your use cases. We will also be writing cookbook recipes for the use cases related to search. Eventually, we will start writing the specs for the next version of the API. And as we go, we will be implementing POCs to validate our solutions 
and make sure that they're workable. Thank you very much. Uh, great, thank you, Maria. And so the next one is the Discovery Technical Specification Group. So this is the uh, kind of technical version of the one that uh, Joshua mentioned earlier, the D4H. And this is chaired by uh, Antoine, Matt, and Rob. Um, again, you, you've seen this uh, announced on the session on Tuesday, um, but it's great to announce that the change discovery version one was approved by the TRC last week uh, and has been published live now. Uh, and 1.0 means it's uh, ready to use. And so we're really excited to see lots of implementations of the change discovery. Uh, and this is all about synchronizing between um, different people. So sending things to European, DPLA, that kind of aggregation of IIIF content. Um, the content state specification, uh, which is designed so that the view of a IIIF resource can be passed between viewers. This is a more formal way of specifying the IIIF drag and drop icon functionality and also adds other ways of starting a viewer in a certain state, such as a URL parameter to preload a viewer with a particular manifest. Uh, this has also seen really good uptake as you saw in the session on Tuesday and again this is released to ver version 0 0.9 so it's very close to being a full 1.0 release um, but we're just looking for uh, further implementations and then finally work has begun to aggregate change discovery endpoints in the form of a registry of activity streams and this will provide a centralized source to automate uh, accessing a large amount of IIIF resources and so if you are looking at implementing the change discovery API we'd love to add your a change discovery endpoint um, to the IIIF registry so others can see it. And the next steps, uh, updating to change discovery API 1.1, and this is to begin working on notification patterns um, so people can be updated um, if there are changes on your resources, especially if you're annotating other people's resources, if you can push uh, notifications. Um, and then content state API, again, encouraging uh, implementation of content state, uh, particularly in major viewers. So we saw lots of demonstrations of plugins in Mirador on Tuesday. And uh, we hope to see more of that with the universal viewer and also other IIIF viewers uh, to implement content state. And then further development of the registry of activity streams and encouraging people to, um, to submit those. And then the final uh, TSG, which was mentioned earlier as well as the maps uh, TSG, uh, this is chaired by Mike, Brian, Elliot, and Bert. Um, and their main use calls, goals um, are to understand how to integrate uh, maps and IIIF. And looking at their particular recent work, um, they've uh, done a cookbook recipe, which is looking at how you can represent a fragment of an image uh, on a, a fragment of a IIIF image on a map. Uh, and that's been approved and released. Uh, they're now working on an extension to the API uh, version 3 to add a nav place uh, and they're hoping to release that in Ju July 2021, so that's very close. Um, they've also produced a couple of cookbook recipes to go along with that nav place extension, exploring um, how we can relate um, a IIIF object to a geographical place. And they've also been working with other different groups, uh, looking at other standards bodies, working with maps uh, to make sure it's compatible. And in the future, once they've moved away from NavPlace, they're going to focus on um, georeferencing and how we can georeference maps uh, in a standard way and be able to publish that uh, along with the IIIF manifest uh, to be able to use that in different tools and working with uh, the all maps tool we saw on Tuesday again um, to see if we can make that data uh, standard and, and shareable between viewers. Uh, they also want to look at um, adding um, geographical plugins to existing um, viewers like Mirador 3. Um, and also during discussions through the map group and the 3D group, there's obviously a lot of synergy between the two groups. Uh, and so they'll be exploring different ways they can work together um, to help uh, both groups um, in this area. So as I mentioned, all of these groups um, are open to anyone to join. And if you have a look at the IIIF calendar, you can see um, when the different groups are meeting. Um, the first three uh, meet every two weeks, the discovery on Wednesdays and the um, search and um, authentication on Tuesday and they alternate and the maps group meets monthly, uh, but it uh, interlinks with the maps community group. Uh, and with that, I will pass over back to Josh. Great. Thank you, Glenn. Um, I, I think we can just stop sharing the slides here. The last one basically just says questions. Um, 
and we do just just as we planned. Um, we, we nailed it, guys. Um, we have about 15 minutes for questions or, or conversation. Um, uh, I, what I will say is that we, you know, like the three of us can absolutely talk about and answer questions um, as best we can. Some questions may be better suited to some of the chairs of the community groups, um, but we'll do the best we can. So, so I had some questions in the, the Whova chat um, as they occur to you. Um, I get the last thing I will say um, uh, before we dive into the questions is, is just a little bit about um, process and, and to say that um, that's an overview of the existing community groups and technical specification groups, but um, those all came uh, to fruition because there was interest and, and kind of a, you know, a, a set of folks who were interested in, in sharing and in fostering those conversations. And, and that is possible. It, it, you know, it's not a fixed number. We can create new community groups. Um, if you're interested in that, um, we have some process documents um, we can show you. Um, and that's kind of part of what we're here to do. Glenn, Meg, and myself um, are happy to, to help you think through and talk through like what, what it means to have a community group or to foster those discussions. Um, just by way of example, I think I'm, I'm trying to think of other, if there are groups that are sort of um, being talked about, um, they're probably not yet to the, you know, to the level of forming a full community group, but there, for example, um, in the domain of um, projects related to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, you know, as you can imagine, over the last couple years or so, there's been a lot of interest in in how AAAF intersects with that area. Um, and it, it may, as I said, it may not be a community group, but there there probably will be some kind of at least a um, uh, group of, of interested folks uh, or a, a meeting at least um, to talk about maybe, you know, just sharing best practices in terms of how machine learning outputs are stored as AAAF annotations, um, examples like that. So that's a, that's, there's some conversation happening around that. Um, AAAF, I, there's, a, there's been some talk about um, AAAF for researchers. I, I don't, Glenn, can I put you on the spot and maybe just briefly mention like, like the, what the genesis is there and, and where it might be going? Yeah, so the AAAF research comes out from uh, funding from the UK and it's collaboration um, between um, as, no, I'm going to get this wrong, so I'm not going to say, <laughs> but based in Glasgow, uh, among with other institutions. Uh, it's a really interesting uh, discussion place to really hear the voice of researchers. And uh, if it continues, it would be a, a great thing that we can maybe mold into a future community group. And as Josh says, um, the community groups are really flu fluid and all depends on interest. Uh, and so it's yeah, great to support any others that uh, might fit and people are interested in supporting. Thanks, Glenn. And I, I, I think that's the last time I will catch you unawares and put you on the spot, but no promises. Um, so, so I think that that's the comment I wanted to make um, that, that, yeah, that this, you know, the community evolves as, you know, as there is desire um, to help make it evolve. Um, with that, uh, I see some good, yeah, some good links to other projects. Um, in, in the chat here. Ah, and thank you. Neil Fitzgerald has just kind of put the, um, a link to a document that that does a little bit better job of describing the the connection between machine learning and triple uh, machine learning artificial intelligence and triple AF. I, I forgot to mention this, but I will say that 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 idea very specifically came as um, as a maybe a, a co co effort. Um, with a, a, another group or community called um, AI for Lamb, um, which is very specifically looking at machine learning and artificial intelligence projects. Um, and, and so that, that may be a joint venture in the future. Um, let's see, are there questions? Ah, I see, let's see. Uh, what's the first one here? Um, how was it being a AAAF coordinator during the surge of interest caused by everything going online hybrid? Um, that's a great question. Um, who, who, Meg? Do you want to give thoughts on? And I will say, sorry, but I will. I will mention that Meg came on board as a AAAF staffer um, in late February, so like literally days before the world kind of went indoors. And so I'm really curious to hear Meg's response to that. Yeah. Um... 
I mean, I'll just start off by saying that it was super interesting to, you know, deal with a global pandemic um, in terms of like my professional life and personal life, you know, like I think everyone was in this crazy place together where, you know, we had to hold it together while, um, you know, the world was upended. Um, I thought I was so like just blown away by how quickly people adjusted and like the commitment that everyone had to learning new things and working online and um, everyone in the community kind of came together to put together a document on how to work with the currently available AAAF materials. Um, and I thought it was just so great to see everyone, you know, do what they could so quickly. Um, you know, we saw a really great turnout at our, our conference um, that we had to quickly switch to an online format from uh, in-person uh, format. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was crazy, but you know, it's, I think we got a lot done and um, I, I definitely feel like, it, you know, we were able to respond quickly because it's a community that's already online and, you know, used to, to not meeting in person, in person all the time. Um, although it's sad that we have not been able to. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, I think people really came together. Um, it was a lot, a lot of work um, that was, you know, really ultimately, I think did a lot of good. I, I just want to plus one that and, and say that I don't want to call it a silver lining because that that really makes light of, of a pan. But I guess what I will say is that it activated some thinking that we were already doing about the best way to connect with a broader, um, segment of the AAAF community, which is to say that like the, the vibrancy of the in-person meetings is, is just incredible and, and something we want to continue, but there's very much an inequitable aspect. If we only do the work of the community in, at in-person meetings, that, that just leaves out um, a, like a majority of the world, um, folks who just aren't going to be able to travel internationally to participate in the conferences. So. It, it, we were already talking about the fact that we need to be a hybrid institution, just as Meg said, you know, we're already very much used to that in community meetings. So, so I think it's just given us, it, it, it gave us a crash course, I guess, is what I'll say in, in, in trying to do this coherently and competently, finding the best way to, to, to juggle in-person meetings, uh, the best of in-person meetings with the sort of more um, equitable toolkits we can we can put together in terms of online meetings. Um, Glenn, is there anything you want to add or should we keep moving? No, I, I mean, I, I quickly echo what you said. I think the biggest impact uh, I felt is the training um, and that was all in person until I had to switch online. Um, and actually, I think that's been really helpful. We've been able to do it much more regularly than we would do normally. Um, and it's great doing it online and that you get people from all different places. Um, you know, sometimes we get people joining at one o'clock in the morning, which is just absolutely amazed. But it, it's been great to um, be able to reach out to people that, as you say, we probably wouldn't be able to connect in person. Yeah, no, that's great. That, that's that's a, absolutely right. The training has been a, a real highlight also. Um, there's another question here. This, this gets it relatively um, specific and Glenn, something you mentioned, but you may want to kick this to the MAPS chairs. I'll give you the option. Um, there's a question about, um, you mentioned georeferencing fragments. Is that with regard to ancient maps or does that include artifacts? It can include artifacts if there's if it's an image of an artifact. But uh, yes, as Josh says, I'll put you into the MAPS uh, group and they will be more than happy to talk to you about it. <laughs> uh, oh, great. There's uh, another question here. Is there any discussion of a community group for educational pedagogical uses of AAAF? Um, the, I think the answer there is that, that that has come up a number of times over the years. And, and in fact, also related to some of what Meg said at the beginning of the pandemic, when the timeline was like just really unclear and, and we just had no idea what was going to happen. Um, there was a lot of interest in and and a lot of work put into gathering tools and resources and documents for particularly for educators doing remote um, learning. Um, and in terms of a community group, this has come up a couple times. I think there are a lot of folks who are interested who would participate in something like that. I think not to put too fine a point on it. I think 
part of maybe the main thing it lacks is really somebody or a set of somebody's who would be interested in in like leading that work and and um, uh, you know putting together meetings and, and setting up um, a rhythm and an agenda for that. Um, there, I think there is a lot of potential there, um, and I think it it actually relates to a lot of the work, some of the work you know related to what Glenn was talking about with IIIF for researchers. Um, there's some amount of inter intersection there. Um, so yeah, the, the, the short answer is yes, there's been discussion. Um, it hasn't kind of hit the threshold yet of, of tumbling into a formalized group, but, but it could happen at any moment. And, and if, if that is of interest to you, I, you know, like we'd be happy to talk with you um, after, after the conference or after the session today. Let's see, are there other questions? Is there anything in the chat that I'm missing? There's one question quite early on, and um, maybe I'll ask it and, and you two can answer it. Um, uh, there's a question about uh, if, you're, if you don't have an IT background, is it possible to contribute to the 3D community group um, that you've described in your presentation? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, and I'll answer that specific question. Then I will actually, because I think it applies to a, a huge number of of groups. Um, yeah, I think the three D group is is absolutely a the community group as it exists now um, is a great place to participate. I think you would find, um, uh, you know, I think you would find a lot of interest. I think you would find a lot of people. That group particularly has a wide variety of some folks who are, are literally developing 3D viewers and you know doing really hard math in their heads and typing that into code but then you know there's there's also a lot of folks who uh, you know are are more on the you know the curatorial side or or the you know the digital object side um and, and so it's not just for IT folks or or developers um and in particular the stage that they're at is is making sure that use cases are covered and workflows. So if that's a piece, you know, if that's something that you work with, they, they'd really love your, your experience and input there. Um, so, th so the answer is absolutely yes on the 3D group. I will say also like that is very much as a large scale comment, I think that's a point of maturity that we're seeing in the AAAF community. So it started, you know, it, it is itself a technology. It's a it's it's a set of open specifications. It's it's similar to the things that make the web and um, the internet work. Um, so that at root is you know what AAAF is. But the community has evolved enough that we're seeing you know that that we it's not just open to people without software and developer backgrounds. It it's essential that we get that set of people involved so that we have kind of the full range of web experience represented. Um, so really all of these groups um, would, you know, benefit from, from people who, you know, are working with um, the technologies, who are working with students, who are working with, you know, museum visitors. Um, that, that's, that's the only way that, you know, we can create the, the most robust set of technologies and, and get that experience incorporated um, into the, the AAAF specs and software tools and all of that. Um, yeah, I hope that was a good answer. So another question from Joe I picked up. Uh, would Slack be the recommended place to initiate a new community groups? Just a general question. Um, so I get my suggest, so I think Slack is a great place to, yeah, to, to find fellow travelers or folks who are interested. Um, but I think, um, you know, it's just, I, basically I would say like anywhere you think that community of interest or, or, you know, that domain would, has, has folks um, involved. So um, I'm trying to think of examples, you know, like the archives community group, you know, has, has archive archivists um, in the US, UK, Europe, all over the place. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of where their community is. Um, you know, others uh, have existing communities kind of on our Slack and other Slacks. Um, I would say, yeah, the Slack and the, the, the AAAF discuss list for kind of announcing or, or seeking interest would be a good place to start. But Meg, anything, anything that I'm not thinking of? Um, yeah, no, I think that it's Slack and the AAAF discuss list. Um, 
in terms of looking for uh, fellow interested um, people, maybe the general channel, uh, as well as the discuss would probably be good. And well, also potentially Twitter, if you're a, a Twitter person. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see. Yeah, I think a, a number of conversations have sprung up on Twitter. And I think that has been kind of the, the genesis of, of a couple of different connections. Um, is there any any last questions? I'm, I'm scrolling, I'm not seeing a lot. I think we have time for one more if there's something on people's minds. Someone uh, just suggested at the top of the questions, um, how about using the Whova topics in the community tab for following up? That, that's a great question. The answer is <laughs> yes, I think we should do that. Um, so I think that's, I mean, that, that's probably a great note to end on. So I think that's a great suggestion. I think, you know, I, I, I think I'm a broken record on this, but I, I just am really grateful to the folks who came today, like the AAAF community, just is a pretty special thing in terms of the interest and the output um, of people who are just pursuing things that are of interest to them in a way that you know makes it useful to other people. Um, so yeah, I want to thank folks for joining us here today. Um, we'll send out the recording of this um, when it's done. Uh, I want to thank Glenn and Meg for um, handling bits of this today and also for all the work they've done this week. Um, yeah, and with that, I think. We'll end the recording and we'll see you folks at uh, the few remaining sessions of this conference. Thanks all. Thanks everyone, bye.